In this episode of Ranked, I will be looking at all eight of Kenny Wood's current roller coasters, all of which I've ridden, and ranking them from worst to best in my opinion. Kennywood is located in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh, and opened all the way back in 1899. So this park is very historic, and is home to many rare rides that you are hard-pressed to find or are impossible to find at any other parks in the world. This extends to their unique collection of roller coasters as well, many of which use the hilly terrain in some way to their advantage. From a historic standpoint, the most notable coasters here would be their three classic wooden roller coasters, one of which is 100 years old as of this year. There is also a pretty historic steel coaster here as well, and Phantom's Revenge. This Morgan Hyper Coaster, which drops 228 feet into a ravine under the Thunderbolt, originally opened in 1991 as a looping aerodynamics hyper coaster known as Steel Phantom and even featured the largest drop and fastest speed on a coaster for the time. You all know the drill with these lists. Everyone's opinion is different, but this is how I feel about the coasters of Kennywood. After watching this, be sure to let me know how you would rank these rides from worst to best. Without further ado, here is Kennywood Ranked. Of course, coming in all the way at the bottom, at the number 8 spot, is Lil Phantom. This is just a simple kitty coaster, nothing really special here. This one opened in 1996 and was built by Molina and Sons. At number 7 is Racer, one of the park's classic wooden roller coasters. Now Racer actually opened in 1927, meaning it's well over 90 years old at this point. This is a pretty fun ride. It's okay. I mean, starting... With the rides after this, they get a lot better. It's a Mobius loop coaster, which means that you return to the opposite side of the station that you started on. You actually have to ride this starting from both sides of the station to actually go around the whole track since it's technically just one long track. Like I said, Racer is just an okay ride. It's not too thrilling. This would kind of be a good starter coaster for somebody that is looking to advance maybe into a little bit more thrilling rides. But basically, this is just a simple double out and back layout. At number six is Exterminator. Exterminator is a Revershawn spinning wild mouse coaster that opened at the park in 1999. This is actually a really fun wild mouse. Exterminator is actually themed really well. Some really cool theming here. It's just a really fun ride with the spinning aspect. And of course, being indoors, it's fun because you can't really see much of anything. So it just adds a thrill factor. This is actually probably the best wild mouse I've been on. I would say this is by far the best wild mouse I've been on, probably, come to think of it. Number five is Jackrabbit. Now, Jackrabbit is actually celebrating its 100th anniversary this year, 2020, so that is pretty awesome. And even though this ride is very simple, I mean, just a very simple, small, double outback layout, there's one thing about this ride that makes it special. This is the main reason you ride Jackrabbit, and that is that double down going into the ravine after the lift hill. This double down provides this insane pop of ejector air. I mean, it is crazy. This is one of the best moments of airtime that I've experienced. This is just a really cool moment of the ride. It's only made that much better because there are basically no restraints on this ride. There is a lap bar that doesn't move at all. You just have a seat belt that comes over you, and that's it with this ride. So you feel very open, and that double down just makes this ride worth it. Otherwise, it's pretty basic, kind of fun going down the dips, but that double down is truly what makes Jackrabbit a really fun ride. At the number four spot is Thunderbolt. Now, Thunderbolt is really interesting. This is actually one of two coasters at Kennywood that has been converted from its original form over the years. Thunderbolt actually opened in 1924 as Pippin, and Pippin was just a really simple double out and back layout, not really much to it. But after 1967, Kennywood converted Pippin into the Thunderbolt, and they added the twister section to the ride, which features amazing laterals, some of the best laterals I've experienced on any coaster. You go down the drop, and then you hit these turns that are just barely banked at all, and you're just flying through them. So you'll crush the person that's sitting on the left. They actually require the bigger person to be sitting on the left when you ride this, and you actually have to have two people in the seats as well. You can't ride alone. So this is a really fun ride. That helix section after the lift hill with those bank turns really makes this ride. And this is just a true classic. This is a ride that was at least at one time world famous. It's a really good ride for what it is. And uh, definitely my favorite wooden coaster at Kennywood by far. 
And of course, the ride starts out with a huge drop right out of the station. And also, one more really unique thing about Thunderbolt, the biggest drop on this ride is actually the very last drop. The last drop is actually 90 feet. The drop out of the station is 70 feet. Having a 90 foot drop right at the end of the ride, then go up and into the break run, that's kind of cool, having the biggest drop at the very end. It's just really unique. Getting into the really good stuff now, at number three, I have the Premier Rides launch coaster known as Skyrocket. This is the one and only Skyrocket model actually produced by Premier. It's a prototype for the later Skyrocket 2 models, which we've come to know very well, as well as the Skyrocket 3 model, which was built at Six Flags Magic Mountain. But Skyrocket is just a really fun ride. This opened in 2010, and it has a really fun launch, some wicked ejector airtime over that top hat, and then you go into this twisted layout, just twisting and turning and going upside down. There's lots of cool stuff about this ride. It's smooth, fun, fast-paced. It dies out a little bit towards the end, but I can overlook that because, in my opinion, this is just such a fun, underrated ride. At number two is the new for 2019, Steel Curtain. This is the newest coaster at Kennywood. It was built by SNS, and of course, it is themed to the local NFL team known as the Pittsburgh Steelers, where the name actually comes from. I'm not going to get into the meaning of the name. You can look that up and read about it. And I actually mentioned Steel Curtain in my Worst Coaster Names video, and I gotta admit, I feel like I gave this ride a little bit too much flack in that video. Even though I don't particularly care for the name Steel Curtain, when I think about it now, I don't know if it's necessarily one of the worst names out there. I don't think it really deserved that. But in any case, Steel Curtain, it's a fun ride. To be honest, I was left a little disappointed when I wrote it. To be fair, I've only gotten one ride on this because the operations when I went last year were terrible. I was only able to get one ride on it. But for what it is, it's a very fun ride. It has a couple decent moments of airtime. Of course, it has the highest inversion in the world, which is really cool. Very fast ride. It's not super intense, but, you know, it features tons of fast-paced inversions. And actually, the most intense part of the ride is at the very end, going through that cutback, and then there's a couple turns after that. Overall, Steel Curtain, I think, is an awesome attraction for Kennywood, and it's awesome to see that they got something like this. It's just a really unique ride. Pretty fun. But in my opinion, there's one coaster that still reigns supreme after nearly 20 years. And that is, of course, Phantom's Revenge. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, Phantom's Revenge is actually the second coaster, which is a conversion at Kennywood. Phantom's Revenge originally opened as a coaster called Steel Phantom, which was built by Aerodynamics and opened in the year 1991. It had four inversions had the longest drop in the world, the fastest speed on a coaster at the time when it opened. After about nine years, Kennywood decided to have Morgan come in and redo Steel Phantom, turn the layout into more of a traditional hypercoaster style layout. They put a huge overbank turn in the ravine after that huge drop, and then added a few bunny hills at the end, which provide some of the most, probably the most insane ejector airtime I felt on any coaster. It's definitely up there. These are really, really fun airtime moments, and they just absolutely throw you out of your seat. And not to mention, there are some good positive Gs on this ride as well. When you get to the bottom of that 228-foot drop, I mean, you're hauling, and as you hit that turn at the bottom, you're just slammed with positive Gs, and it's just an amazing experience, really, really unique. You can't really find a coaster like this anywhere else. And of course, the restraints are amazing. I talked about these restraints in my worst and best restraints video that I made, so go check that out if you haven't. But Phantom's Revenge, in my opinion, is a bit underrated, and I think it's just a really phenomenal coaster. It's in my top 10 overall, and this is definitely one that you cannot miss if you go to Kennywood. Make sure you get a few rides on this when you go. Thank you all so much for watching my ranked list for Kennywood, and let me know how you'd place these rides. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe as well as watch my coaster rankings for other parks I've visited. The ranked playlist is linked in the card above. Be sure to like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook, and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. As usual, this is Coaster Daddy. Bye.